This time on Pedalbox, we're not working at Pedalbox HQ, we're on Chris's driveway working on his SD1 because it has a very important deadline that has to be met. And we might take a look at something just a little bit more special. So that's right, in about four weeks, this car is going to the north of Italy on a road trip. And as you can see, it is not ready for that by any stretch of the imagination. So we've had a lot of our friends come over here and help Chris for the last, what, four weeks or so? Uh, on and off? Not quite, but, but yeah, for yeah, a while. Everybody's basically coming down here, doing a weekend to try and get this thing together. The engine is basically fine, there's no problems there, it's been fi fixed up, and I think the well, only fix apart really... Apart it doesn't have a cooling system at the minute. Apart from the fact it doesn't have a cooling system, it would practically speaking run and we might even be able to tune it properly because a massive vacuum leak that we didn't know that was there has now been fixed. Inside the car is a completely different matter however this is basically exactly where it was left off the last time you saw this on the channel in which Chris was fitting out all of the interior. I'll admit it has moved on a little bit but it's still basically missing the entire dashboard all of the heater system inside but a huge amount of work has been done to get the carpet in the seats in and everything else after all of that vinyl was put in. So this is basically Dynamat, which has been put across every single panel in the car where it would fit. And then on top of that, there is mass loaded vinyl in all of the places where people might stand and sort of put their feet and would otherwise crush this down a little bit if it had double sided foam on. Because everywhere that you're not going to put your feet, so doors, panels, roof, etc., does have dual layer on. So this makes the whole car sound a lot nicer when you're driving down. It now sounds like this, instead of sounding like this. So a lot of the time this morning has been finishing off getting this door sorted, and we had a lot of problems getting the uh, window mech aligned. It kept jamming as we were going up and down. We tried lots and lots of different stuff, putting a little bit of grease inside, which did help to some degree. In the end, what we discovered was the bolts we were fastening onto the door with were too long, and it was actually clipping the mechanism. As soon as we put shorter bolts in, spaced them out with some washers, because we didn't have exactly the right length, everything works perfectly. So that was a good hour and a half wasted, So, but completely on brand for us. So the next thing for the car is the heater box has to go in, because this sits underneath the entire dashboard fascia, which actually fully covers over here. So these are actually the face vents in the centre of the dashboard and um, I've had to replace a whole bunch of parts in here because it's all like 40 year old foam that had like decayed and degraded. I'm not sure if um, I ever mentioned it in a previous episode, but when I'd opened the face fence to let air out to give me a nice bit of ventilation, the foam that had been on there had degraded so much it would just get caught up in the breeze and blow out into my face. So I've got new foam in there that we've just had Maffy has painted up for me. I've replaced all the seals on my uh, recirculating uh, valve here. Some of the adhesive's given up, but as I move this here, it's all a bit sticky still, but as I move this here, so this panel comes out through the front um, scuttle underneath the windscreen. When that flap opens, it gets air from outside. When it goes the other way, it recirculates air in from inside. So I've had to put new foam on both, foam and seals and everything on both sides of this to stop it from rattling like it used to. You can still hear a little bit when it goes that way. There's a little bit of rattle to it, but it's a lot, lot better than it used to be. This is all resealed, so it is going to go where it's supposed to. And now that's been painted because this is visible through those face vents. We've got some black paint on the foam there. Now I think we're ready to pop this in the car and start figuring out how to seal around our water pipes. Because this is where the front firewall is into the engine bay. So these pins come through into the engine bay and hold it in place. We've got a block of foam there just to take up the excess. And we're also going to put another piece of that uh, sound deadening butyl rubber over here, not for sound deadening, but because it's rubber, it'll act as a really, really good seal. So we're gonna put one each side of the firewall and hopefully sandwich the metal of the firewall and the hole in it between these two pieces of like self-amalgamating rubber. So that'll hopefully form a really good seal there and stop what happened to the original foam from happening to this piece. So this is the old piece of foam that used to go around those two pipes and you can see where it has melted really, really badly. And that is because it lives down here in the engine bay that Chris is just going to point out. Just in here, and the number six uh, cylinder exhaust is really quite close to where that piece of foam is. And because there wasn't a, a cover panel on here protecting it from heat, that foam was quite directly exposed to exhaust warmth. So that obviously melted and we're hoping that with the sound deadening on there, because it has a foil outer layer, 
that I'm going to put on the engine bay side of this. We're hoping that the foil layer from that will, re will reflect a lot of the heat back and keep this foam from melting as well. So this is now garbage. Okay. So here is the big heater box just about to go in and we just need to see where this comes around from the other side as well. Just try and hold this out of the way a little bit. There's a lot going on in here, unfortunately, and getting everything kind of slotted in is no joke. See how this lines up on the front. Hang on a second. Oh, ac chopping a bunch of my wires. Actually, terror bad. Hang on, I will come and help with that. So the actual thing I need to line up is that screw hole into the body there. Oh, underneath all of that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that one. Cool. Yeah. So that that's now basically in place. So this is where those pipes have ended up. They are right down at the bottom of this little cutout. So we just need to transfer these holes onto our new uh, dynamat that we can just throw on the firewall on each side. So we'll get that done. Hopefully get all these back connected up and then we can bolt that heater box in proper. So Matthew's currently poking holes in the insulation to put the heater hoses through and I'm getting this door card hung up because finally I've tested all of my windows and confirmed the two of them are broken but the other two at the back so I don't care so it's enough for the road trip. Now the door cards on these are a little bit tricky because you've got a lot of different bits of uh, kind of competing alignment to happen all at once so I've got to get there's a tab that sits underneath my door pole here that the door card wants to be low to clear. There's the top hooks over some metal clips on the top of the door frame, which obviously wants to keep the door card up, which is competing with that. And this panel that you can't see at the minute because Aid's inspecting the top of the door, but there's a panel around the door shut that wants to, uh, wants to kind of press in. There's a little groove on the inside of the door pull that holds the door card straight. It's almost like Rover knew they wouldn't hold the shape on their own. Um, so I got to like tuck that in. And I think now, Having spent so long talking about how difficult this all is, I think I've just accidentally kind of done it all relatively easily. So now I've got to go around, find all the crappy little plastic pins that press into place and clip it on. I thought I found one there, but... In fairness, the reason why this has gone so easily this time is because you've done it how many times so far? I don't want to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the problem. It's not that this is an easy job. You're making a difficult job look easy yeah. purely because you've done it 40,000 times. Pretty much. And yeah. Of course, getting the alignment for these pins is still a pain. It's weird. It's weird. It looks like they're lined up right, but I can't get them to engage. Oh, wait, hang on. No, that one's gone. It just didn't clip. And one of the other big problems with these door cards is they are really, really loose and floppy because they're just pressed cardboard effectively. They were probably fine when they were newer, but now yeah. they're 40 years old and they've worn. And nobody makes spares. Nope. You cannot get them anymore, so they are absolute unobtainium. So whilst you need to hit these clips pretty hard to get them in, you don't want to break the door card. You can break the clip, I suppose. Yeah, the clips are replaceable. But the door card isn't, so it's it's using exactly the right amount of pressure in exactly the right place without using too much, which is obviously obviously the amount you actually need in many situations. Yeah. But so, ooh, that is that is nearly there. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're together. I'm not sure why that's sitting so high. I think I might be missing a clip or something on the top, or maybe the tolerances are all out. Because what's supposed to happen is this kind of drops into there, and these clips kind of secure it but as you can see they're not doing that i wonder if i've got enough room can i get something in there and just pr close these clips up a little i can get the door i can get the window down because that works now i might be able to pre compress those a bit with some grips i'm not totally sure i like this because it feels like a it spring squeezed in. yeah it did definitely go a bit didn't it that one hasn't yet Oh, I think it just nailed. did a little. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see if that holds a... Oh, it's a bit better. And the back is going to be held in when I put the surround on the lock here. That'll hold the back down. And the front will be held down by that screw. So I, there's, a, there's a screw in the front here. Um, except there isn't at the minute, because the P-clip that it goes into is missing. 
So that's the problem I've got to figure out. But once the front's held in by that, the back's held in by the locks around, I think this should be pretty good. So that's our little patch of um, Dynamat in place. I just need to pull these cables out the way and then hopefully we can get the box to fit in, which is going to be very difficult to film because I've now run out of hands to uh, move everything back. So uh, that works a little bit better. That is through and even aligns with the bolt hole up here. Nice. So here's the engine bay side and I'm hoping that this is going to line up over these two holes into the heater matrix and uh, just kind of fit. I've had to do a bunch of cleaning in here because there's obviously this being the engine bay there's all sorts of oil and grime and kind of crap everywhere. What so do you mean this engine leaks oil? No! no. no it leaks everything it doesn't <laughs> just leak oil. Um, actually that's not true it doesn't leak coolant anymore it just leaks everything else but I'm hoping that I've cleaned enough of this now that that will stick in place and now we've got a nice rubber on rubber seal both sides. So I'm just going to run over all the edges with the roller. Oh, so that's done. It's uh, it's not factory, but I think there's a decent chance it's actually better than factory. Um, if that continues to be unhappy in future, there is actually meant to be a whole like noise and heat proof layer on here. Unfortunately, I didn't know there was meant to be one until I had a look at another SD1 that had it. Uh, it must have been removed from mine ages ago. But if I, if I continue having problems with any of this stuff, I'll have to try and source something that I can uh, protect the whole firewall with. But for now, I think this should be fine. Now, I'm pretty well known among my friends as being a bad influence when it comes to cars, which is why I started doing a show called Bad Influence, looking at various cars and convincing you lovely people to buy them. However, this is the first one that was actually a result of Pedalbox that I can confirm was a result of us. This is a 1962 Thunderbird that Chris's dad bought after seeing my 66 and going, yeah, I definitely want one of them. Apparently, he'd wanted one since he was six years old, and eventually, he picked up this white with red interior convertible. Now, it's the same engine as mine. It's the 390 FE, um, but obviously it's the previous generation. This generation went from 61 to 63. The fourth gen went from 64 to 66. And now this one obviously has a, I don't want to call it hard top because it's not, it is a hard top. The whole thing is a hard top, but this is a nice cover that turns this into a beautiful two seater and I really, really like it. And the roof all works, which is fantastic. So yeah, the roof works absolutely fantastically. There are a couple of things because this car didn't actually come direct from America. This came from Denmark. And in Denmark, you need these little repeaters to be added on. You can't get away with just using the regular turn signals as built originally. You can in the UK, so those are probably gonna come off. So this, this whole cowl that goes up here was on the um, sports roadster version. So this was almost certainly an optional extra that was bought when this car was optioned. And it looks stunning, particularly right now in the sun, it looks absolutely amazing. I mean, probably it took much convincing, It's getting on a bit now. As usual, we've been weighed down by lots of like little fiddly bits and pieces, bits of wiring, bits of getting screws lined up, that sort of stuff. But I think with the heater box fully installed, it's now time to get the fascia in. Now this is going to be a really, really big deal. It's the whole like front of the interior of the car. And I'm hoping that with this in, it'll really sort of, I won't say complete because we still haven't got a steering wheel or center console, but I'm hoping it'll kind of get everything a lot more together. It's also massive and really in the way. So we're going to get that out now and get that installed, or hopefully, and uh, see what bites us in the ass next. I don't. Cool. Okay. The best, the, really, the best, yeah, you've, you've pretty much got it by the best bit. <laughs> um, now, if you, if we just feed this into the car and then you nip around the other side, so that wiring loom that's currently sitting over the heater box there all has yes. to feed through uh, that hole in the middle. That hole the back, right there. That hole, oh, all of that has to go through it. Yeah. This into, right. I'm going to try something magic. I, I mean, bearing in mind, I have done this completely on my own before. 
So this, oh, not that. This is going to be a terrible this piece of video for anybody watching this. So usually... Yeah, I can't even remotely get in, so... Uh... Yeah, got it. And you feed the endmost cables through first. And I presume it's through this one. Yeah. Right, I've got this end, if you want to get towards the middle, Chris. Yeah, because you do eventually have to just start feeding the uh, fascia closer to the to the bundle. I'm trying to do it without sitting on any of the... Uh, I've cracked a bunch of fascia. There's just so much stuff in here. Well, that's done. That took about six more arms than I thought it would, um, but we're in. So I've just got to find the front of a little relay, or sorry, of the front of a switch that fell off while we were working. Um, I had a couple of switches on for testing systems before this all went in, and I very cleverly left the switches on, the wiring, uh, before putting this in. So I was trying to pull them all through and pass uh, through into here, and the, I pulled some stuff apart, which is not great, but um, hopefully I can find all that, get it all back together, figure out what switches went here and here and uh, went in these four holes that I've taken out. And um, yeah, I think that'll be a, a, a pretty good note to end the day on. Um, yeah, considering how not together this car was 24 hours ago. So while they plug in the rest of those cables and there is no room for me to do anything at all, it is left to me to say thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to buy some of the merch, which I'm actually wearing, uh, you can go to shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy all this sort of stuff as well as mugs and more. You can also support us more directly at patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show where you will also as a patron get discount at shop.pedalbox.show and if you haven't already and you want to see more of this and all the other cars you can subscribe yeah. like us on all the usual social media channels like the video and comment down below what you want to see us do more other than i don't know maybe drive some more things and get some more ideas for some more projects to do in the future thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next episode